Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Selena Jensen, and I'm the focal point for the Assessment, Measurement, and Evidence Working Group of the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action. Thank you for tuning in to this instructional video. So today we're going to be discussing the selection, review, and contextualization of child protection minimum standards indicators. I will firstly provide a brief overview of the child protection minimum standards indicators, and then the three key steps to selecting, reviewing, and contextualizing indicators. So to provide you with a brief overview of the child protection minimum standards indicators, which you will likely already be familiar with. The minimum standards indicators highlights key indicators that are aligned with the standards and the key actions within each specific standard. The indicators themselves include output indicators, quality indicators, and outcome level indicators with a focus on the outcome level. As a sector, very output focused, and during the revision of the child protection minimum standards, we really wanted to focus more on the outcome level in terms of the outcome of our child protection activities on the children and families and communities who we work with. The indicator table itself is not an exhaustive list of indicators. We have selected indicators in line with the key actions and the standards. So as many of you will have seen, this is a, a screenshot from the Child Protection Minimum Standards itself. In each standard, there is a section on measurement, which includes a few priority indicators that were selected. It doesn't include the entire list of indicators, but you'll see here that the additional related indicators are available online. Each of the standard has approximately 10 to 20 indicators. So I would really encourage you if you haven't seen that longer list of indicators to take a look through that longer list, especially when you're engaging in this contextualization exercise. This is a screenshot of that longer list. We have also enhanced the table to include the type of indicator, the method of computation, which explains how to calculate the indicator and the numerator and denominator. And then we've also added data source examples. And this additional information will support you in applying and measuring the indicators. So who should use the Child Protection Minimum Standards indicators? Since these standards are intended for all humanitarian actors, everyone, particularly those actors who work in child protection, or directly with children, families, and communities should use the indicators in their efforts to measure progress towards the standards. So for instance, progress against sectoral objectives at the interagency child protection coordination group level or at the programmatic level if you're an individual agency. Now there's three key steps to contextualizing the indicators. There are approximately 300 indicators included in the extended list of indicators that you'll find online. This I know can be overwhelming to decide which indicators to prioritize and select. However, I would also like to remind you that many of the indicators are similar in nature. So for instance, many of the standards will include an indicator related to identifying or putting into place a functional referral mechanism. Many other standards will include an indicator specifically related to satisfaction with service provision. While there's almost 300 indicators included in the table, these are similar in nature and I would encourage you to also modify them accordingly so that you're not selecting similar indicators from your priority standards. So the three key steps to help make the process more straightforward in terms of selecting and contextualizing the indicators is firstly to select the indicators relevant to the planned objectives and activities you plan to carry forth and implement or that are in line with the key actions. 
Then secondly, to review the selected indicators. And lastly, to contextualize or modify the indicators as needed. Here is a screenshot of the table of contents of a brief guidance document to selecting the indicators for application in programs, projects, or in humanitarian response plans. And this brief presentation really speaks to the wider guidance document. And this brief note will have more details that you can review. And I would encourage you to go through the guidance document for further details um, than what I will be presenting. It has additional guidance on do's and don'ts. It includes an indicator reference sheet, and then also some of the ethical considerations um, that we need to account for in terms of children's participation and data collection. And for the child protection coordination groups, there's also a CPMS adherence tool and reference sheet that will support you in monitoring the indicators that are selected. So the first step is to select the indicators. The following questions will support you in the selection process and in narrowing down the most suitable indicators. So it's encouraged for you to determine what it is you need to know to show that change has been achieved towards the key actions. Additionally, what is critical to measure to demonstrate progress towards the standard that you have selected and prioritized. One tip is to match the actions or activities that you plan to implement and that you have prioritized for the response with the indicators. And these actions and activities will also be prioritized in terms of the identified child protection needs in the context where you are working. The second step, once you have selected the indicators, is to review the selected indicators. And key questions to guide you in the review process is really to consider whether the de data will be accessible, what resources are required to collect the data in terms of specifically human and financial resources. Primary data collection will, of course, be more human resource and financially resource heavy. Any other restraints that exist in the context that might prohibit data collection, such as security issues. It's important to answer all of these questions um, as you are selecting indicators to really determine whether they will be feasible in your context. And then lastly is to contextualize and modify the indicators as well as the targets that are listed in the child protection minimum standards indicator table. So the CPMS indicators aim to capture the standards for child protection in a broad range of circumstances so that they are apl applicable and open to adaptation across humanitarian contexts. So as a result, they will need to be contextualized if necessary to your context. They're often phrased in general terms and should be adapted to fit specific sectoral objectives or programmatic objectives and priorities. Always ensure that you contextualize the indicators so that they're culturally and locally appropriate and relevant. And remember to contextualize and also locally define terminology such as child well-being, safety, what is meant by satisfaction. And you'll find that in the notes column of the indicators, there will be specific notes to remind you to contextualize definitions. If your coordination group has contextualized definitions, that is a great resource that you can also turn to, to ensure that the indicators themselves align with those contextualized definitions. And then last but not least, is to set realistic targets to your context. You'll likely have noted that many of the targets listed in the minimum standards indicator table are aspirational, and they therefore need to be contextualized um, to what is realistic and feasible within your context. And that concludes this uh, instructional video. I thank you very much for your participation. I unfortunately can't answer your questions, but I would encourage you to please reach out if you do have any questions 
to the AIM working group at the Alliance, and I would be happy to respond to you via email. And this is the email that you'll see here, aim.wg at alliancecpha.org. Thank you very much. Hi again. For those of you who are wanting to do an activity, if this is a contextualization workshop, I will briefly explain a quick activity of about 45 minutes that is recommended to do in small groups of about four to five participants. So importantly, please note that this activity should be completed only if you have already selected and identified your priority standards that you will be contextualizing in your context with the wider Child Protection Coordination Group. This activity should be aligned with selecting indicators and prioritizing indicators in line with those priority standards. So the first step, once you are in your smaller groups, is to spend about 30 minutes to go through the three steps that I have just explained. So you'll select two to four indicators from your priority standard. Here I have suggested standard 12, um, but it will depend on which standards you have prioritized in your context with your working group to contextualize. And then secondly, to review those indicators based on the standards that you have prioritized and contextualized and the key actions that you have identified. And then lastly, to contextualize and modify the indicators and any targets or terminology accordingly. You might decide that the indicators do not need to be modified or contextualized, the ones that you have selected and if that is the case, please be prepared to explain why you have decided not to contextualize the indicators or modify them. And if you have contextualized and modified the indicators, also be prepared to explain in plenary what decisions led you to contextualize them the way you have contextualized them. And also explain which two to four indicators you have chosen and why. So. Once you have spent about 30 minutes in your small groups going through these three steps, you might have 15 to 20 minutes to come back in plenary with the rest of your coordination group members to all share and present which indicators you have selected, why and how if you have contextualized and modified them. So I would encourage you to carry out this activity during your contextualization workshop. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me, Selena Jensen, at the AIM Working Group at the Alliance. And thank you very much for your participation.